हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर शंकर दे स्टार्टिंग उथ नाइन्थ भिडियो अफ नीट टू थाउजेंड टोटी वन रिकल कोश्चन डिसकाशन दिस इज कोश्चन नम्बर एट्टी वन ए फिमेल पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेड उथ कमप्लेन्स अफ यूरिनारि लीकेज डिंग लाफिंग और एनी स्ट्रेनास एक्टिविटी अन एक्सामेशन सिसटोसिड वज फाउंड ह्वाट इज द डायगनोसिस अफ दिस केस सो देर इज urinary leakage during any strenuous activity or straining like laughing so this is nothing but stress urinary incontinence so the answer of this question will be stress incontinence stress urinary incontinence next coming to question number 82 those who have not subscribed my channel yet please subscribe my channel and press on the bell icon to get notifications about further videos so question number 82 indomethacin given to pregnant female at 36 week is likely to cause what in the baby as all of you know this drug indomethacin is nothing but non steroidal anti inflammatory drug non steroidal anti inflammatory prostaglandin blocking agent so prostaglandin blocking agent non steroidal anti inflammatory drug as all of you know prostaglandin helps to maintain the patency of ductus arteriosus so any prostaglandin blocking agent will result in premature closure of ductus arteriosus so answer will be indomethacin will cause premature closure of ductus arteriosus so this will be the complication in the baby and uh, uh, premature closure of ductus arteriosus similar and prostaglandin analog like ileoprost this is used to maintain the patency of ductus arteriosus in some congenital heart disease patients ileoprost but in this case indomethacin will cause premature closure of ductus arteriosus coming to question number 83 teenage patient with transverse vaginal septum presented with dysmenorrhea and chronic pelvic pain likely cause so transverse vaginal septum can cause accumulation of blood inside inside first vagina then inside uterus or fallopian tube so hematometra can develop hematocolpus can develop hematocolpus so, salpings can develop due to retrograde flow of menstrual blood there can be endometriosis retrograde flow of blood because of presence of transverse vaginal septum there is retrograde flow of menstrual blood that can results in endometriosis and endometriosis present with presence with dysmenorrhea and chronic pelvic pain so this is likely cause in this case endometriosis is the answer coming to question number 84 pregnant female with infra umbilical flattening there is flattening of infra umbilical portion of abdomen in a pregnant female and fetal heart sound heart fetal heart sound heart on latter heart on lateral flank so pregnant female with infra umbilical flattening and fetal heart sound on lateral part of abdomen so the presentation most likely in this case is what presentation yes occipito posterior so the answer is occipito occipito posterior position so the answer of this question is occipito posterior position now coming to the next question question number 85 post molar evacuation patient with increase beta hcg increase beta hcg in a post molar evacuation patient and canon ball metastasis present in the lung so this is definitely a case of chorionic carcinoma this is trophoblastic neoplasm that is chorio carcinoma chorio carcinoma with metastasis to lung probably it is stage 3 stage 3 chorio carcinoma and best management in this case emaco regimen e m s e emaco regimen so this is the best management for this patient of post molar evacuation patient with increased beta hcg cannon ball metastasis emaco regimen 
not methotrexate methotrexate is not the answer in this case this is not the answer emaco regimen is the right answer for this question emaco regimen next question number 86 patient presents with pph conservative management fail you want to perform some devascularization procedure to manage the pph what is order of ligation order of ligation is asked so devascularization procedure you want to perform in a patient of pph in whom conservative management fail to prevent it fail to manage it so how how will you perform devascularization in order so first artery you will like it you can that is uterine artery uterine artery next ovarian artery if fail internal iliac artery so these three arteries Ut uterine artery ovarian artery and internal iliac artery so uterine artery ovarian artery one two three so this is the answer for this question uterine artery ovarian artery and internal iliac artery next question number 87 management of uterine septum suppose this is uterus sorry very bad diagram of mine so this is uterus here presence of one septum is there within the body of the uterus and the question asks what is the management of this uterine septum tell me what is the management yes you are very right the best management for this septum is hysteroscopic resection so hysteroscopic resection of septum resection of septum, not metroplasty hysteroscopic resection of septum is best management for this case next coming to question number 88 uterine didelphus didelphus will cause all of the following except so is there complications like repeated abortion yes there can be preterm liver yes preterm liver also can occur with uterine didelphus type of mullerian mullerian disorder mullerian uh, mullerian duct development and anomaly yes transverse lie also can possible in uterine detail first but this is less likely to happen endometriosis so the answer for this question is endometriosis is less likely in the question was except so the answer will be endometriosis a 65 year old male with inguinal hernia inguinal swelling medial to inferior epigastric artery so this point is important as you all know suppose this is this is the body structure as you all know here one triangle is present that is called Hasselbeck triangle it is formed by this border by lateral border of rectus abdominis this this by one artery what artery inferior epigastric artery laterally and inferiorly one ligament that is inguinal ligament medial but this is Hasselbeck triangle so any hernia that is present medial to this inferior epigastric artery is direct hernia or lateral to this artery is indirect hernia through through the opening internal so through the opening in the fascia transversalis so inguinal canal opening internal opening and any hernia which lies medial to this wall is the direct hernia so answer in the question medial to inferior epigastric swelling was mentioned so defi definitely this is a case of direct hernia and surgery surgery is preferable surgery lichtenstein so lichtenstein repair direct hernia lichtenstein repair so this is the answer for this question direct hernia lichtenstein repair next coming to question number 90 this identify the type of injury question from forensic medicine identify this is the injury here injury is injury occur over bony prominences over bony prominence so any injury which occur over bony prominence with any blunt 
blunt instrument or blunt object can cause an injury that may look like inci incised wound or incision wound but it is actually lacerated wound so it is nothing but the answer is incised looking incised looking lacerated wound incised looking lacerated wound what is the other name of this wound yes tell me what is the other name of this wound incised looking lacerated wound yes this is is what split laceration split laceration so i think this is very clear too i have discussed question number 81 to 90 in the next video i am going to discuss question number 91 to 100 to get notification about the next video subscribe my channel dr shankar day so till then tata bye bye thank you for watching i am expecting more